Citizens Non-Sensible. So before we get into what we're doing right now, should we introduce our guests? All right, so uh, I'll introduce. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Saul Good. I'm a rapper MC here in Korea. I represent a group called Part-Time Cooks with my buddy Black Moss from South Africa. And I'm from North Carolina. I've been in Korea for like nine years now. Nine years. Doing uh, music stuff for like six or seven. Hello, my name is Wu, and I'm a gangster. I <laughs> lived in Korea. <laughs> now, um, I worked as a dancer for a long time, and I'm a DJ right now. And now I direct stages for artists, a choreography, like directing. I, I did a bunch of stuff, like concerts, just TV shows, just, uh, how do you say that? Like the festivals at like colleges. Yeah. The resume's fucking endless. Like yeah. Every TV show, every fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Also has like a 16 pack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this what? this quarantine is making me like a one pack, you know. Oh, really? yeah. What was that? What was that genre of dance that you were kind of you were almost at the forefront of that here in Korea? Oh, because that's, right. oh. yeah, that's how that's how I know Wu is from seeing you on the internet, and you were like kind of you were the epitome of that genre of dancing. I keep, I keep forgetting about crumb. that. Was it, yeah, I, it, it was crumb. It was crumb, right? It was crumb. Yeah, so it's a it's a long story, but uh, so that was the style that I was known for, and at that time nobody was doing it in Asia, so I'm like the first guy that did it. I found out like later on, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that you were doing something. I was just doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's dope. at that time there was like no YouTube or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it was yeah, just like a. How old are you? I'm like 56, <laughs> man. <laughs> there was no YouTube. I don't know. There was, there was no YouTube. <laughs> like, like in 2002, like YouTube was not big back then. Yeah, that's right. It was like yeah. barely coming up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like wait, 2002, really the big in like 2004. But he looks great. If he doesn't, if there was a time when he was how, an adult. How old do you think Wu is? Like yeah, younger than me, or, or <laughs> no? Same as me. All right, let me. Let me do, you, do, you, do you know MySpace? Yes. You know MySpace. When I was in college, MySpace was the one. Okay. You know Cyworld. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you wait, know you that? Yeah. You don't know Cyworld? You, no. Cyworld's like the it was like the Korean version the of Facebook, Facebook yeah. back in the day. No, I don't know that. Okay, so it was kind yeah, of MySpace, Cyworld generation. You don't know Cyworld? Mm -mm. Damn. I know Cy. No, shut up. <laughs> but even my mother knows Cy. I actually asked my mom today if she knew Cy, and she knew, because I was in Gangnam going to the bookstore, and she's she she remembered the jam. What was that song he had with Snoop Dogg? We could talk about that. I'm just kidding. He had a song with Snoop Dogg? Yeah. Snoop Dogg came here and they shot a video. It looked crazy. Um, What was that song called? Al it was Hangover. Yeah, it was about Hangover. Ah, hangover. that's right. I completely forgot about that. Hangover. Completely forgot about that song. Yeah. Well, we're talking about Sai? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh you I actually, who did you think we were talking I, about? I, I met him actually for the first time like not too long ago because uh -huh. uh, I was directing the the dance thing for crush yeah and he had a he had a he had a concert and that's the first time i met him and i kind of worked with him a little bit and i was surprised he he had so much detail he was just like watching everything like directing with me and he was like telling me like little stuff like that he was looking at differently oh, is it and it was really nice yeah he was i think he was one of the best person i work with I heard he's a is a super big workaholic, perfectionist. Yeah. yeah, I also heard that he can like really rap. Like back in the day, he was like known as a MC, not like a pop star. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. even had like controversial songs about. Like, yeah, his his music got banned that. on a lot of Korean broadcasting back in the day. Like, he was taboo in Korea for a while. I have uh, six degrees of seven Bacon, of Kev six degrees of Kevin Bacon story related to Psy. I actually was on stage with Cy. Okay. He did a concert here in Seoul, and this was a way back in the day. I can't even remember what song it was, but you know that there's the traditional Korean seesaw. Oh yeah, yeah. and yeah. You, you kind of two people stand on either end, and one person jumps up and, and yeah. launches one person in the air. Yeah. 
I was on stage doing that at a side concert. Were, did, were you the one getting launched in the air? Well, or doing we were the going launch? backwards and forwards. Hell no, he wasn't. <laughs> Hell no, he wasn't. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> was, who, the, who, the, we, who do you know who can launch Sam uh, Hendington? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can launch Sam Hendington. Maybe. Um, but was it was, say, it's hi. a backwards and forwards thing, all right? <laughs> we weren't doing very well at it, but yeah. it was... Now, yeah, I completely forgot about that. And now I remember having talked about Psy. Okay. That was just a random... A random thing that happened in my life that would have been like ten years ago. There was actually a point when he when he was like super hot when that song was out that there were like side lookalike yeah guys yeah, famous doing uh, yeah. concerts. Yeah. Like I, I did like I've performed at some like big festivals here where um, there was like actual like big K pop stars performing, mm -hmm. but also on the bill wasn't Psy, but a Psy lookalike. So there was a time when Psy was so much hotter than everyone else that like to be uh, you that a Psy lookalike could be on the bill. With like the guy who's yeah yeah shots. yeah yeah man that was like 2012 13. It's not a bad living if you can look like somebody else and make money off that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now I guess we kind of we've kind of I guess you call us a bit of a catch up and kind of gone through you know what's been happening and and whatnot. Maybe we should just kind of move into the. All right. The yeah. Let's do it. Show. All right. Let's do it. See this jar here. Who can reach this jar? Can you reach that jar? Yeah. So All right. A... Reach to tell us tell us about. Are you arm length shaming me? Uh, I uh, definitely can't reach that one. <laughs> the one that says "tell us about." All right, so we got a jar here that says "tell us about." And uh, sorry, if what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the jar. It's very random. <laughs> this is gonna be a lead into conversation. <laughs> if this podcast goes well, can we get a better jar? I don't know. Just just something about tape and marker. This jar that looks like it could pick with some cucumbers. Seriously, I actually, I. You like if it was going to get any better, it would be a pickle jar with tape on top of it. Yeah. Uh, what do you What do you uh, want? Do you want like a, a, a no, something I'll like a fourteen up. karat gold jar? It's cat hair on it, then it'll feel like it's. <laughs> 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 uh, this is this, this, this <laughs> even a real jar. It's not covered in cat <laughs> hair. Right. All right. So what do we got, Sam? <laughs> Tell us about your worst roommate story. Yo, woo, have you ever had a roommate? You've had a cellmate. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now the topic is wow. shitting on us. Wow. Dude, bring it back from that. <laughs> where, where do you go from there? That that's a bar. like, wow. That that's a bar. Harsh. Maybe that's I'm not the only rapper on the show. Based on true story. <laughs> wow. Bars. All right. So Worst roommate. Okay. Can we, can we start with Wu? If we're gonna... We can start wherever we want. Has, Actually, has everyone had a roommate? Let, let, have you ever had a roommate, Wu? Oh, man. I had like like 5,000 roommates. Oh, uh, for real? <laughs> well, oh. Actually, cellmates, you know? Stop me here and forgive me for being um, just... Oh, we got to go out back the, to this. Completely out of the loop. <laughs> I, I don't know if we're joking or being serious right now. I'm being very serious. Yeah, I actually f heard it in the elevator on the way up. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, and, and this is something you're comfortable... Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. I talked about it like... Okay. Like, yeah. So that's your limitations. Bro. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. That's our podcast. That's okay. the beauty of our podcast. So cool. I was um, I was locked up when I was a kid for a long time, mm -hmm. and I got deported like a long time ago. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I was, yeah. So I had a lot of cellmates. So you got you got deported back to Korea. Yeah. Do you have family out here or? Oh, uh, actually, I have a uncle. Uh huh. Uh, I'm not really close with, but. That's the only family that I have. Oh, most of your family's back in the yeah. States. Yeah. yeah, I don't have much family members, but you know, I, most of them are in the States. I've met a few people in similar circumstances that just, they moved to the States when they were younger or got adopted over there and the paperwork just never got finalized and ended up getting deported back to Korea. It was kind of like that at the end. Like my mom, she couldn't speak English that well mm -hmm. and she couldn't get the stuff like all, you know. Sorted out. out, yeah. You have any uh, cellmates that, were nightmares for you? I think I, maybe I was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I would be worried about the three of us going to jail, but I think he can fend for himself. <laughs> yeah, I, the woo's safe. I, I, <sighs> any roommate story I can bring to the table right now does not compare with that. I mean, it's, it's all past, so it's, you know, I was a teenager, so this is a crazy story. So I had a roommate and... um. A cellmate, I mean, a, a, cellmate. Oh yeah, I had a cellmate, and every every place that you're incarcerated is a little bit different, uh -huh. you know. But at that time, I was with a cellmate, and so if you're injured somewhere, like on your body, like you could kind of, you know, 
get out of jail for a second. Like you go to the hospital yep. and the the staff the staff or the cops they'll they'll get you good food or something like that in between. Mm -hmm. So this crazy roommate I had, all of a sudden he's like, "Whoa, I gotta get out of here." I'm like, what you mean? I'm like, I gotta get out of here right now. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what you want, man? <laughs> he's like, you gotta break my finger. I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so did you break his finger? It was like, so you broke his finger. No, yeah, I broke his finger. But, you had no idea. How did you put that in the jar? That you're get that <laughs> wow, it's one of the yeah the crazy story I got. That's hey, so he went to hospital and got to enjoy some good food for a while. Yeah, he came back happy. <laughs> like thanks woo you're my man he's like hey woo man you're my man man <laughs> wow just broke my arm just <laughs> doing that i can imagine how easy I, snapped a finger did you notice that soul's slightly moving close towards you right now <laughs> no, like, i think he's I think that it's cool. couch is looking a little bit <laughs> i think it's cool I'm like, i want to befriend him so <laughs> so if i ever need someone to break my finger i'm good wow. i'm sure he can do it quick and painlessly oh, oh wow I don't know if this story is too wild. And well, compared to that, I don't think anything could be really much wilder, could it? I you mean, prison stories. Yeah. No, <laughs> not really. And one more, one more story. Oh, yeah. Go, I had, go, I go, go, go. Take it away. I had a completely uh, different kind of roommate. Um, this, so this is when I'm like, you know, I'm free. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, uh, not too long ago, like maybe eight years ago or something like that, okay. and. Uh, I had a I have a friend named Marshall. He's an artist in Korea, uh -huh. so he was trying to figure stuff out in Korea, mm -hmm. and he had no place to go. And he was like, "And we're we're and we're good friends. Like we're still like really good friends." And and I think I was I can't remember how it started, but I think I kind of felt bad at his situation at that time. He's in a better place now, but I was like, "Hey, just come live with me, man." You know, yeah. and and he was he was and he started living in my house. Uh, this is not like funny or anything like that, but it was just a uh, different experience. I felt like I was, I had like a new family, mm -hmm. you know, and because he used to talk to God every night. Like, is he really religious? He's not really religious, but in a good way. He has a good balance with his religion. And when, you, to, say, when you say talk, like he'd kind of, he'd be praying to God or. Uh, somewhat like that. He, I think he's praying, but he's like, it feels like he's really talking to God, having, you know? Almost having yeah, a conversation. But, yeah. And, and I kind of got, got involved with that, you know, in a good way. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of felt, felt good in just listening to him. And it was just, I don't know, you ask him when it comes on. You it know was what like I mean? Peaceful. Yeah, it was very peaceful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was a, so it was a, um, so it's spiritual, completely different yeah, yeah. from breaking my finger to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a different kind of connection. Yeah. You, you've you've taken it to both ends of the scale there. Yeah, you, all my yeah, life. Positive experience, all, like negative that experience. Life. That's what I like about Wu. He has his yeah. dark sides and he has his sweet sides. I mean, I th we, we all have our dark sides in our, yeah, our so, Some people are more prevalent than others. You oh, know? yeah, absolutely. There's absolutely. shitty people out there, man. I'm sorry, but I don't think... The, everywhere there's shitty people. There's nobody here is a shitty person though. Not no, but because I invited y'all. Because <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't. So have you're the mag efficient. You're the magnet that that doesn't attract shit. Is uh, what you're saying. Most of the people you, around me are good people. You're not a shit magnet. I'm not a shit magnet. That's a good thing. To <laughs> be. I'm not a shit magnet. What about you, Sam? You got any roommate stories? I do have a roommate. So I didn't think I did have a roommate story, but I do have a roommate story. Um. I was living with my girlfriend at the time and we decided we were going to rent out the spare room in our apartment. Okay. So, uh, a, a good friend of mine had, you know, we said, you know, come and move in and we we're living there. Everything was great. Everyone was doing their share around the apartment. We were all chipping in. It was a really good environment to be in, but then eventually it kind of got weird because he was a single guy we were a couple and you know as single people are they tend to bring people over to the apartment and he got in a relationship with a girl that was a little on the uh i, I guess boiling bunny side a bit of fatal fatal attraction kind of thing and boiling bunny 
You, have you ever seen the movie Fatal Attraction? Ah, uh, no, no. There's a scene where she boils a bunny and, like, yeah, it's this whole stalkerish kind of yeah, yeah. extreme relationship. And it was it was getting to the stage where this girl was almost a fourth roommate oh, in the apartment. Okay. And um, you'd wake up in the morning, you'd have to get in the shower and go to work, and, and she's in there showering, which is fine. Her shower's ended up taking 30, 45 minutes. And then it would get to the stage where things would not, it wasn't major things. It was like um, perfume, shampoo. Or she'd start using our things. Yeah, yeah. So every boundary we had was already crossed over. But we've got this roommate that we've got a good relationship in. And it's kind of like, you know, how do you approach the subject? Your girlfriend's crossed the line. She's invading our space. You know, she's your girlfriend. Why is she living here? And why is she? It almost felt like she was welching off us. What, was he paying rent? He was. Yeah. She, the the girlfriend, wasn't. He wasn't. Yeah. So he was paying like a third of the rent, but there was two people living there. Yeah, yeah. And it got to the stage where I just said, you know, I think I came home drunk one night, and I said, you know, <laughs> it's a great start to any story. Come home drunk. I'm like, man, you get this is this is bullshit. Yeah. You've got this girl living here. She's not paying for food. She's not paying for rent. She's using all our shit. And that essentially was the beginning of the end of that relationship. And that he just like kind of lost his shit and ended up losing, moving out after that. Did you, did you talk to him reasonably? I like to think I was very reasonable. I generally probably wasn't very you, reasonable. You weren't, man. And Do I, you remember we got I fight? remember. Really? I almost threw a chair at him. Yeah. Almost threw a chair. <laughs> yeah, but Wu, Wu slapped me drunk too, though. I think everyone's. Oh everyone, my god! <laughs> but hang on. I heard about that too. Don't don't. You can't pretend like you were the victim in that situation either. That was a that was a clash. Do all right. This is interesting. That was a this, clash. This it wasn't. It was, it, yeah, it was a clash. It, yeah. it, it, there was two sides. You know, there yeah. was there was some arrogance on your part. There was arrogance on my part. We just yeah. <laughs> what happened about Wu slapping you? He slapped, uh, he slapped his heart in the face and broke your finger. <laughs> <laughs> was that is that's a that was a proper slap? Oh yeah, Wu slapped the shit out of me. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, he was he, Wu was a little too drunk, and uh, he was not he was not in the mood to be uh, fucked with. And uh, I I I scolded him about something that was not my business, uh -huh. and Wu slapped me. And then he came back into reality, and he goes, "Oh shit, man." He I came back into reality. Uh, he, he slapped himself. He slapped me he back slapped. into his own reality. <laughs> and, he, and like five minutes later, he's like, "Man, I should." He's like, "I shouldn't have slapped you." I'm like, "Yeah, man, you shouldn't have slapped me." He but, slapped sense into himself by slapping you. I, I, I should. I, 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 I slaps make the world go around. I was telling Wu shit. I, I didn't have business to be telling him. It's not. It was none of my business. That, yeah, I mean, the, the, and we became really close after that. Yeah, we became <laughs> even closer. You after can really that. become friends with somebody. Me like and Sam got same way thing with us. Closer. We yeah. got a lot closer after we got that. Way closer. Yeah, after that. and it kind of just. I think it. We both kind of chilled out a lot more. Yeah, like we were kind of. We knew our. We knew our. Yeah, we knew our boundaries too. a lot more, and it, it was kind of like. Um, I was. I had a bar at the time in Itaewon, and and Dave was there, and he got a little drunk, and I'd been drinking, and yeah, you know, there was, he had <laughs> some words with somebody else, and I'm like, you can't be doing this in my establishment, kind of thing, and, and yeah, it. That I guy said, was a that guy was a prick though. He yeah, but he was a customer. <laughs> yes, yeah, he was a paying customer yeah. <laughs> from my was, position, yeah, but yeah. I completely agree with you. Yeah, that guy was a prick. But I took him downstairs, and we were getting quite, you know. Quite yeah. heated with the argument, and my hand reached out for a stool, <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, fuck you!" And my wife at the time is in the middle of us, like, "No, you can't do this. Neither of you can do this." Yeah, yeah. And it just kind of, I guess, the senses just kicked in. I was like, "I don't think we talked for a few days after that." Yeah, but then we talked. But and, then we yeah. talked it through, and and yeah, we it got was even closer. We got a lot closer, Way and. Just the relationship became a lot stronger after that. You want to slap me, Saul? <laughs> <laughs> you owned a bar, a bar back in the day? Yeah. You owned a bar? Where was it? It was... um one Ito one up the hill. It was it called was cool Brickyard. It was a cool fucking bar. And a rooftop bar. What happened to that? I don't know. We just got rid of it because um, Yumi got pregnant with oh, uh, okay. Bentley and it was just like, you got to be there all the time. And yeah. it, anytime you do an establishment that sells alcohol, you kind of have to be there as much as possible. 
Yeah. And when did that close? Like seven years ago or something? No, 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 no. This is like this is like three I mean, when years. was it there? Like uh, this would have been uh, four or five years ago, maybe. It's not long ago. It, yeah. Less. I feel like I've yeah. probably been there. I live in it. Probably. It's, it, it's like a roof, t like a couple tables on the roof. It, yeah. it had like um like wooden pallets on the roof, and it had like um it was all fenced in with um artificial grass. Yeah, I think I was. I've been there. Was, before. There was the car park right across the way. Yeah. It was um parking lot. Yeah, parking lot, whatever, car park. Yeah. If you'd been there, you'd know. Like, if I, I showed you pictures, there. you'd probably know it. I, I, yeah. I believe I've been there before. Okay. I, okay. I want to, now that Saul's kind of getting into it, I want to ask you about roommate stories. Man, I have a I lot know, of I, I know, I actually know someone you've lived with before. Really? Who's that? I don't know if you still live with him. Jan and Julian? Yeah. Uh, I, know yeah, Jul yeah. I know Julian. I yeah. know of Jan. Jan, Julian, and I all three live together. Still? No, no, but we did. we did a okay. few years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that was like right around the time that Julian was becoming re-famous uh -huh. from doing Pi Jong Sang Yep. And yeah, it was funny. I remember Jan said like, get ready, Julian's about to get super famous again. And like, <laughs> sure enough, like a month later, there were like teenage girls like knocking on the mm -hmm. door like, where's Julian Opa? <laughs> Real? Yeah, I, that only happened once. Oh, but, okay. But, <laughs> it only yeah. needs to happen once. I I've had someone knocking at our door at eight o'clock in the morning saying, I want to meet your children. Ugh. Oh, that's not cool. I'm like, yeah, that's please leave and never come back. That's wild. That's yeah. cool. Especially that's, that's your family. That's man. crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I have a, like a lot of people don't have roommates before they go to college or whatever. But, um, I had this guy that I met when I was like 15 who was, had just moved from Spanish Harlem to North Carolina because his uh, his dad, I guess, was kind of crazy. And he moved to North Carolina to live with his mom. And I met him through a mutual friend. Uh, and he and I, he was just like a super wild kid. And I was kind of a really wild kid too. I got in trouble uh, kind of a lot. And this guy was just like the kind of dude who would just like drink an entire bottle of liquor and like climb to the top of a foam pole. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And I just like I've done that before, <gasps> you know, it's like the most athletic, yeah. wild, crazy dude ever. You know what I mean? And his name was his name was O'Brien. I don't think he would care if I told this story, but I mean, there were stories about him doing like the most like crazy gangster stuff ever, even as like a fourteen year old kid in Spanish Harlem. And that's a really rough neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But so, anyways, like I I was like, even a rapper back then, and my dad had like set me up with the studio, so my bedroom kind of became the hangout. And he was having a rough relationship with his mom, of course, because, you know, we were sneaking out and getting drunk every night. And my mom and dad loved him. So they kind of like invited him to live with us. And I guess it wasn't legal, but kind of was legal. His, he ended up getting enrolled in the school that I went to. And like it was in the school district, started taking classes and everything. And were you, did your parents become his guardians? Legal guardians? They were tr we were like about to do uh -huh. about to do so. And he's, you know, he kept telling us his mom had said it was cool. Eventually, later on, his mom came to the house and just like yelled at us, like "Y'all are not taking my kid," <laughs> you know, which is wild. It was almost like an abduction case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which you know, we, we, why is my child living in your yeah, house? Yeah, it was kind of. Gave it, permission. Looking back on it, it was a really wild situation. But anyway, so I remember like, um, like the weekend before sophomore year started, um, I, I had sort. There's like a rival high school like East Chapel Hill and Chapel Hill High School. And I went to Chapel Hill High School and I just sort of had like crosstown beef with a senior who went to the rival high school. Like it was it was something like he had hit on my girlfriend and I told someone like, mom, kick that guy's ass, blah, blah. <laughs> so anyways, I went to this like party on the other side of town and I got there and pretty much it was like me, O'Brien, the guy who was living with me and like one of my friends. And everyone at this party was like boys with this guy this guy's name was sam actually who i had like kind of had this beef with yeah and i don't think i'd ever been into a fight before i mean i had wrestled so i was like kind of like not scared of people but i was way thought i was way tougher than i really was <laughs> so when i walked into this party and there's like a hundred people all like kind of eyeing at me like oh that's the kid from chapel hill high who said he's gonna beat up sam uh i i kind of like got 
got in the guy's face and was like, you don't want to hit me. You don't want to hit me. <laughs> and he hit me. <laughs> it's like, it's like that, you remember that show, me, My Brother and Me? Where he's like, and then I told her to hit me. What'd she do? He hit me. <laughs> but anyways, so, so the dude hit me and I was just like, oh man, he actually hit me. This is wild. <laughs> and I kind of like froze and I didn't know what to do. And he hit me again. <laughs> and I also, once again, like kind of didn't know what to do, but I was like, I got to. I got to go in. Anyways, O'Brien, who I'd heard stories about how amazing this dude was at fighting, he just comes flying through, <laughs> like flying through this crowd of people. And there's like, it really is like a hundred kids from that school uh -huh. and like three or four of us. And he's like so intense, you know, like running through with his like Tims and shit that like everyone sort of clears out of the way and he just starts knocking motherfuckers out, like <laughs> everybody. And he goes at this one guy who was like coming to fight me too, who was like, had a good reputation for being like the badass of that other school. Mm -hmm. And he's just got this guy by the hair, smashing his face into like a pop out microwave. Just like, <laughs> y'all messing with my brother. Y'all messing with my brother. Y all, y all. And no one's touching him. Like he's just that wild. It was insane. Like, and it took like 10 people to pull O'Brien off this guy for messing with me. And even while they're pulling him off, he kicks his Timberland boots and gets the guy one more, <laughs> one more time in the face. Like this dude was, <laughs> the craziest fighter I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Yeah. And that was like my roommate when I was 15. <laughs> <laughs> How old was he? I mean, he was like the same as me, same age as me. Like your 15-year-old roommate. For, we were 14 or 15, yeah. When you were 14 years old, you had a... F <laughs> the fact that you had a roommate at the age of 14 is insane. insane as it is, but that was... Wow. <laughs> have you, have, 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 you've yeah, had roommates? I've had roommates, Here. but I don't have any horror stories. I've pretty much liked every, I've gotten along pretty well with every roommate I've ever had. Yeah, um, since I've known you, you've lived by yourself. Yeah. I've, uh, Most of them can't talk because they're cats. <laughs> 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 and a dog. Um, I guess the closest thing to a roommate I've hated having is, I guess, it, when every time my brother visited Korea, that's always been a fucking nightmare. Yo, this is gonna. I no, really no, no, like this podcast. No, but that, but that's, I would listen to this. But seriously, I'm. I know exactly where you're going because whenever my mum comes over, like my mum's been over here for three weeks at a time, and it just drives you nuts. Yeah. All right, this or that. So an example would be when you eat your cereal, do you put milk in the bowl first and then put cereal on top, or is it cereal on top of? Oh, that's cool. Cereal you know, first, first then milk. milk. Yeah. You could get with this, or you could get with exactly this. to be dumped or have to, or to have to dump somebody. I uh, well, I guess have has everyone had the opportunity to be dumped and also to dump someone? Yeah, I was I was always horrible with breakups because it was I was like I'd stop picking up phone calls and like it'd, or or just yeah, it'd be like a text message. So that seems like you like, would hate to dump someone. That's um, why. <clears throat> You're avoiding that. It's to do that. the avoidance of having this, having to let the person down, yeah. like and say, "Look, I don't want to be in a relationship anymore." It's more of an avoidance issue. Um, but I'd prefer to do that than actually having to be dumped myself, if yeah. that makes sense. So you prefer to just avoid it and oh uh, yeah, I, for until me, they get the point. But that uh, yeah, for me it was more just avoidance of the issue. But that was like you know when I was. You know, I'm in my 40s now, and it's been a while since I've dumped someone or, or, or been... I've been married for the last five, <laughs> six years, so yeah. this isn't even an issue in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back in the day, it was just conflict avoidance. I don't want to... I don't want to hear this from somebody, but I don't want to say it to somebody either. So you just avoided it until... Yeah, for me, it was completely avoid the issue. Let's just... if Drift if, apart, yeah, naturally? Yeah, if you're separate... For long enough, people will just kind of maybe they'll just forget about me, kind of That's thing. That's the most irresponsible shit I've it ever was, heard. It's about completely, life. No, it's completely <laughs> yeah, responsible. Yeah. And that if someone had did that, to, done that to me, like I don't know how I deal with that either. Yeah, like it's like you ring someone, they don't answer, and you're like, okay, Wait, have, maybe they're busy. I'll ring them back tomorrow, and they don't pick up. And have then, you ever liked somebody so much more than they've liked you? There has been times where I've been in a situation like that. And it was just kind of like, it, it kind of felt the same. Th it was almost like an avoidance of conflict with that person. I don't know. I'd, I'd call them or reach out to them. And sometimes they'd pick up the phone. He'd send them a message, but you wouldn't get a reply. And it was just kind of like, okay, I'm feeling, it's starting to feel like I'm, I'm talking to a brick wall. I told you I was in class. 
<laughs> and you're like, there's no, there, nothing's going on here. And it's just kind of uh -huh. like, okay, whatever. You know, it's not worth. So you're just the avoid being dumped and dumping in, in general. For me, when I was, when I was you. younger, it was, it was just avoid conflict. Don't even get in a situation where there's going to be potential angst, where people are going to get angry, upset. It wasn't yeah, worth well, the Someone's going to get hurt in the end. Yeah, event, case, either, yeah. either way, someone's not going to be happy with yeah. the resolution. And I'm like, I don't want to be involved in that. I'll just, if I take myself out of the situation, it will be easier for everyone. Well, no, it'll be easier for me. It was me being, essentially, yeah. it was being selfish. Yeah, selfish, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that was your way to deal with, you know, those situations. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now that I'm older, I prefer the conflict. Yeah. I'd rather the conflict because yeah. it actually means that there is, you actually have some interest in a person when you, when you have conflict. If you're getting upset and angry at someone, it's because you care about the situation that you're in or you care about the relationship. Yeah. If I'm, if someone says something to me and I'm just like, whatever, and I ignore them, that's because I have no regard for that person. Yeah, yeah. And that's not what you want in a relationship, yeah. whether it's, whether it's, um, you know, a sexual relationship or whether it's just friendship. Yeah. That's not what relationship should be. I, I guess I learned that growing up, but uh, yeah. Speaking of sexual relationships, woo, what, what about you? What would you, what do you prefer? <laughs> what, why? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> I, have to do a sexual. I think he was well, making I gotta, I gotta a joke about how the two on my have a sexual <laughs> Um, are you about to perform? Ah, that's why <laughs> I'm about to dance right now <laughs> <laughs> and sing. <laughs> to be dumped or to dump? I think from my experiences, it's better to be dumped because because when you get dumped, you it, it takes time, but you. You try your best to get over the person, mm -hmm. yeah. and and usually you get better. You know, you start working out or you start um, eating a lot. Oh, that's that's like the first phase, I think. But <laughs> afterwards, it's almost like a self improvement. Yeah. yeah. So you get better and better, and you get stronger. And you learn stuff, and you just do your best. You know, yeah. like once I quit smoking. Yeah. You know, when I was young, when I got dumped. And was that the reason that she dumped you because you smoked? No, no, no. She smoked too. So, <laughs> but I stopped smoking, you know. Yeah. And but when you dump somebody, there's, I mean, it depends on the situation probably. But I don't know. I just felt like really bad for a long time, and there was nothing for me to kind of get over the stuff. Oh, this was like you know? a guilt. Yeah, it was guilt, over. and there's nothing to really fight for, you know. Yeah. Like to get over, or it just. I don't know, it just came naturally, yeah. like really bad. It, it'll get, like, if somebody dump, dump me, then I'll get over it, like, real fast, yeah. you know? But if if this relationship was serious and and if I was the one that dumped the person, then it took me a while. I don't know. Yeah. It was just, and it kind of never goes away. It's just a looming. Yeah, so I think it's better to get dumped. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's interesting because Wu, we, we talked about Wu earlier on about, his roommate asking him to break his finger and he's got this super tough exterior and then all of a sudden it's like yeah. you know being dumped because that's a that's a big burden to take on in, in you're sort of saying i don't want to put a burden on you i'll put it on my shoulders and, and deal with it instead yeah, yeah i think so because and i think you know the the breaking finger stuff was just from the the other stuff that i'm used to mm -hmm. that i grew up but you know like usually people like you know been stabbed or like in a situation like that we have a lot of love for people you know yeah 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 uh, so a person that i dumped is most of the time that love me the most like you know yeah. like my family almost like my family or even more yeah so so it just put me in a bad place for a long time if a situation like that happened yeah. what about what about you so i mean i i guess the what you would hope for is that you both just mutually decide to break up but i mean i definitely have been in a place where i knew i needed to break up with someone and like you said i avoided it, mm -hmm. it, hurt, it i mean i guess i'd rather be hurt than to hurt someone else but that could also be me just protecting my ego yeah. you know what i mean like if i really think about it if, if i was really placed with like um like the option to like jump through one or the other like parallel universe 
I mean, I'd probably, in my own self-interest, want to do the dumping. Yeah. So that it, you know what I mean? But yeah, I'd like to say that I'd prefer to be dumped, but maybe that's not true. There's definitely a pride issue involved in it, yeah. of course. Definitely. I mean, that's even some people who want to break up with somebody, I feel like once they break up, once they get dumped, they develop this like obsession with the person because it's almost like a direct shot at you as a person. You know what I mean? There are like like the psychologists who talk about how um, like being rejected by, there's so many men are terrified of women because that is like the ultimate verdict on you as uh, the value of you as a human. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a reason why some guys are literally like completely frozen when it comes to talking to a pretty woman. Cause it's just kind of like someone saying, I don't want you to be a part of my life yeah. and you procreating is not beneficial for the planet earth. That's, <laughs> deep, that's, that's harsh. That's harsh. That's harsh. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I think I'm the opposite of y'all. Um, I prefer um, breaking up. Being the person who does the breaking up. Being the person that doesn't. I prefer to dump because um, I think Wu knows and maybe you know, Sam. Um, I prefer to dump. to dump and that's because... Actually, I'm getting really depressed talking about this right now. I have this... I have this um, so... When I get my heart broken, I have this feeling right here in my stomach. I don't know if you guys know that feeling. It's like a feeling of, um, it's like an eagerness. And it, it kind of hurts right here when I get my heart broken. And I know, I know Sam and Wu know I'm pretty, uh, I guess, I go through these dark phases in my life. And sometimes it has to do with girls. And I prefer... Every time I get in a relationship, I get into a relationship with somebody I like. And usually for the last at least six, seven years, when I broke up with somebody, there was always a good reason for it. Mm -hmm. For example, they didn't work around my work schedule. I, you know, I, I edit videos, you know, so I go to bed at ridiculous times. And like, for example, I had a sweet girl that I dated like a year ago, a year, a, a year ago. And, um, she went to work at like 8 a.m., you know, and I'd go to bed at like 8 a.m., you know? Yep. So it just didn't work out, you know, and I had reasons to break up with her. But every time a girl has dumped me, um, I, I get this feeling right here and I can't deal with the feeling. And that's why I try not to get into relationships because like you were saying earlier, I, I have a huge fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. It just destroys me. I can't do anything. I can't edit videos. I can't go out. Wow. I go through drinking problems. We've seen it. But but is it is it when you you're in deeply love with the person, or is it just like every situation is like that? Here's the thing. You know, when I think back, I wasn't in love, and I think it's just I wanted to. I wanted that person to love me. So is that is is that like is it rejection in general, or is this kind of more like a? Maybe a, a deep seated issue of wanting to feel. Yeah, I wanted. I want somebody to. Yeah, take care I mean, of me and I, love me. I, I guess I, I haven't had family. In being 10 away years. from family yeah. for so long yeah. puts you in a situation, especially when you live by yourself. Yeah, and in in an in industry that you work in, you've kind of you you spend a lot of time by yourself. So not having that support system around obviously makes it a lot more difficult, and you kind of almost will yourself to be in a relationship in certain situations because yeah, you want absolutely. that support and that emotional support, that mental support, and just having someone there that can be there for you. And that's why you've got, you know, 12 dogs, a cat's, hmm. <laughs> is because when you open the yeah. door, someone's there for you when you get yeah. home. I mean, you guys have seen me disappear before you guys, oh, yeah. have, you guys have seen my depressing. I've seen, it, I've seen it once or twice. Yeah, so my be, depressing yeah. in Instagram. So you guys know, you guys know all about that. Very Every emo. single one of you. Very emo. Yeah, I, I get, I get like that sometimes. Who's <gasps> been there for me? We do, we take we take walks sometimes at night in the park. Actually, I'm not even lying. That doesn't sound very emo. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we we well, we walked in the park at <laughs> night together for yeah. for a long time. Uh, when I went through these stages. We would just take me out. We just go for like hour long walks. And yeah, walking walk. I mean, yeah. it works for depression and stuff yeah. like that. You know, just like get your mind cleared. Yeah, we have our little like path that we used to take. Even like you know with basketball, that 
basketball has helped me a lot through you know breakups and shit too basketball is the best you don't think about anything yeah when you play basketball yeah. except for basketball <laughs> yeah it's amazing yeah just all i think about is re rebounds yeah. yeah snagging boards being Re the dennis rodman of our d2 yeah. rec mm. league it goes from rebecca to rebounds mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, All right. I I guess we I like I like that I like that kind of I like these kind of topics. Wait, is, is this for you? Did this not almost feel like some kind of emotional healing? Yeah, it, it, it felt it, good. It felt, it felt good, like yeah. you got kind of deep there personally. Yeah, I felt good, and you got something off your chest. Yeah, like I really felt it too when he said about the pain. That was crazy. That it, was, it's yeah. a feeling right it, here. I don't that, know. It, we talk about that and you say, I'm heartbroken. That's what that is. There's that feeling that you get. It's not physically, your heart does not break. I, I don't like that but feeling. But it feels like your heart is breaking. I think it's like an instant depression that comes like really strong uh, and you feel like throwing up and yeah, stuff like, like that. Yeah, I feel like throwing up. I feel like, yeah. I feel that right now. Really? Yeah, just I feel, I feel it. Just it. thinking about it, oh. I feel it right now. That like, is... Like, I, I, it, I feel feel it literally as we're, i'm talking about this because it takes me back to feeling that amount of emotional destruction no. sam you never went through that kind of the butterfly I've, thing i've i've been through i've <laughs> been in a situation based on a relationship that put me into a, a situation of depression where i had to actually go and talk to um professionals about it because of a breakup? Well, it wasn't a breakup. It wasn't even a breakup. It was just that I was in a long distance relationship at the time. And oh. it was like, you know, there's only so much you can do via um, letters and telephone calls and that's rough. And, oh. and email. And it was just, you get yourself, when you're away from someone halfway around the world, you start second guessing and everything becomes so much of it being a glass half full. Everything you look, you think about is you're like, you know, why isn't she picking up the phone? You know, what is she doing? Yeah. And you just get yourself in a hole and you're like, you don't need to. But knowing that you can't see them, knowing that you can't just, you know, jump in a taxi and, and go and meet them. I think for me mentally, it put me in a really bad place. Um, and luckily, you know, having the opportunity to talk with professionals and, and talk through the issues that definitely helped, mm. but it wasn't. It wasn't a breaking up issue. It was more of the unknown, yeah, and not being able to. It almost not being able to control your destiny. Yeah, I hate that too. That for me is probably even more concerning. That's something that I mm. I deal with on a day to day basis. I've never been been in a long distance relationship. Mm. You guys? Yeah, I've been yeah. In a couple. I've never been. I. When I was recommended, right? No, I <laughs> dated I dated a girl through World of Warcraft, an online RPG. What? <laughs> when I was you fifteen, you dated her through World of, World hey, of Warcraft, I, or you I, met I, her I through had World a girl while I was in the cell that I, uh, from another the girl unit. <laughs> oh, it was not really a date. Writing it's like it was, a, it was yeah, a, like writing letters and stuff. Yeah. Like if you go to church, there's like girls like sitting on the sides. You know what I mean? They're all wearing orange like you. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> there's there are actually like there's like a condition where women like want to take care of men who are in prison. Like many of the most notorious serial killers have, have women on the outside that just for some reason get turned on by the fact that this motherfucker could kill them. <laughs> but it, it's, Why it's, do I but feel like that guy right now? <laughs> <laughs> there, but there are guys like that, or serial killers and women propose to them. Yeah, and they get married. And they get like, married in, in prison. They've never like they may have never met the woman, but they just communicate via letters and and photos and whatnot, and end up getting married. It is quite unusual. I don't know that I'd ever do that myself. Send a letter to a woman in prison and say, "Hey, let's get married." Yeah, maybe that's someone who's like really scared of rejection, also. The way that Dave was talking, like if you're if you're well, this, hollering at a dude who's prison who can never get out and break up with you, well, the chances of rejection are, you're, are minimal. Slim. Minimal. Yeah. You know, the, I'm sure you know in that situation you'd appreciate any type of communication you get. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. The mail is everything when you're when you're in sale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like Korean army. You know, like when you go to the Korean army, they're just waiting for the mails. But these it, days it, they're allowed to do cacao talk and stuff, right? Like sometimes it, I talk to my boys when they're maybe I'm in the military. Not to, you're not in jail. To? 
Dude, you're right. No, not in jail. Oh. Right now, dude. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they have. Uh, you can have access to. Yeah, phones yeah, now. yeah. Have you, did you do Korean military service as well? Yeah, I did. So you've been because to jail say, and you've been to the military. Yeah, but that military was um, how do you say it? just serving from outside? The kongi. Kongi. Ah, uh, so it was like public, public servant um, um, position. Yeah, like you were yeah. there. Like you go to the the training camp. So you did and, basic training for like four weeks. Yeah, yeah, and then you went out and worked at like one of the. the yeah, you um, go there in the morning and you get off at yeah. night for like two two years or something like that. Because they say it doesn't count, like you being locked up in the states. It doesn't I mean, if you were locked up in Korea, then you, you don't have to go to the army. But uh -huh. if you're locked up in the states, you have to go. But luckily, I didn't graduate high school, so I went to Kongi. Wu, <laughs> Wu has got it's so many story, stories. Right? <laughs> I tell you what, if we had time, we could sit here all day just listen and just Wu listen stories. to Wu stories. It's like there's yeah, it's it, wow. Wu's an interesting world. dude. Yeah. All right, wow. so we touch up on a bunch of different subjects, a lot of different, uh, I guess. A, a, a lot of different topics. Yeah. Um, some of them a little darker than others. <laughs> yeah. Live talk! Uh, but, live talk! Hey, yeah. When it's live, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, and exactly. when it's live, you di certainly don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. But I also want to, I, I guess, throw it out there to the listeners as well. If there's things, if there's topics that you'd like to hear discussed or talk uh, talked about, Absolutely. Let feel free know. to hit us up yeah. and, and we'll throw them in the jars and pull them out and... You know, we may or may not be able to relate them to jail time, but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I think it was tight having Wu and Saul too. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I appreciate you taking the time out to come and join us today. Yeah, that um, was super fun. So I throw it over to you guys. If there's anything that you guys want to throw a plug out there for, uh, now's the time to do it. Uh, I'm at Saul Good, PTC, S A U L G O O D E. PTC and I represent Part Time Cooks at Part Time Cooks. Follow us on Instagram and we got a lot of music. Check us out. Uh, part Time Cooks, guys. Yeah, There's a lot of tight music. A lot of tight music. Uh, my Instagram is Damon Wu, D E I M O N W O O. Uh, also, remember to hit the subscribe button and on Apple. Please leave a review. Yeah. Please leave a review. Leave as many reviews. Well, no, don't leave as many because that means you've got multiple accounts. Just leave, yeah, one review and, you know, give us five stars if you appreciate the work. That's that's what makes this podcast fly. So, the, <laughs> I mean, the more reviews we <laughs> get, what the longer we- this podcast fly. I'm a guy. If, if we it's don't, time to say bye. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> uh, I really would like to try. If we don't get a lot of reviews, they're going to fire us. So, please- Please leave a lot of reviews. Leave yeah, and also um, remember that you can find us on Instagram at the Dive Studios, also on YouTube at Dive Studios, where you can check out uh, the videos as well. Uh, Dave, anything you want to say before we say goodbye? No, I'm just I'm just happy that I got to chill with my friends and yeah. talk about a lot of different cool nice shit. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you, brother. Yeah, likewise. Right oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we can, uh, yeah, we can get the situation a little bit more comfortable next time. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining us for the podcast today. And, uh, Appreciate it, boys. Look forward to uh, everyone joining us again soon. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. I know. <laughs> Bye. Hope you enjoyed the clip. If you did, listen to the full episode on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And make sure to subscribe to this channel, Dive Studios, and put those notifications on. Hit that bell. Whoop, whoop, whoop.